Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. Uh, first, before we get begin and get to the very good news we have to report here this morning, I would just like to take a very a brief moment of silence in memory of the victims who we lost with another mass shooting in Lewistown, Maine, overnight. Thank you. Today, we have good news to report from Applegate Lane for the surrounding neighbors, for the first responders who have been involved for the entire city of Louisville. We are here to report that all chemicals and debris have been processed from the site at 6213 Applegate Lane. And by the end of the next day or so, all of that material will have been removed from the site and the risk of explosion, reaction, and fire is over. We have a lot of people to thank for the tremendous hard work, for the creativity, for the effort, and the partnership that got us safely to this day here today. First, let's go back just to remind us, everyone, of how we got here. We were alerted to the situation here on Applegate Lane, which as we've described many times, was a hoarder's house. A house which had chemicals and other debris thrown th strewn throughout the entire site that made it too difficult for people to go in and safely remove the material. In addition, made it difficult for robots to go in and remove the material as well. It was a very unique situation it was also one that we locally and nationally had not seen many times before. Our guiding goals in dealing with this situation has always been safety first. Safety for our first responders, safety for the immediate neighborhood around Applegate Lane, safety for the entire city of Louisville. Personal safety, environmental safety. Those have all been what guided us in making decisions throughout this entire operation. And we are pleased, based on conversations with the United States Environmental Protection Agency, that our local coordinated team was able to partner with them to help get us to this day. The EPA's operation was a solution that was less disruptive to the neighborhood, and we thank them so hard for working with us to remediate this situation. This was one of a very few incidents like this that they or us have seen across the entire country. The bulk of the expenses over the past several weeks were also uh, paid by the EPA through federal funding allocations that they have for remediating these types of very hazardous and dangerous situations. But this partnership truly led to the success that we're here to safely report on today and it was the success of a great partnership. I want to thank all of my colleagues at Metro Government, the entire emergency management team, the Louisville Metro Police Department, Fern Creek Fire, who's been an amazing partner to all of us in this, emergency management, sir, EMS. We have state partners that have been involved, Deputy Mayor David James, Councilman Jeff Hudson and his team, our public health department, and so many others who contributed since the very beginning to address this situation, to figure out the safest way to proceed, and now to be here today to talk about the success of this operation, which safely have remediated this site. So for more details on what has occurred over the past several weeks and how we got here, I want to introduce Chuck Berry, who is the on-scene coordinator from EPA Region 4. Chuck, thank you so much for your and your team's help over the past several weeks and for your involvement. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, thanks again, everyone. My name again is Chuck Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, a federal on-scene coordinator with the US EPA. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to put my sunglasses on because I can't see anything right now, right in the sun. So, <clears throat> uh, For the last three weeks, EPA has been uh, mitigating the risks at the Applegate home. Uh, today, we're happy to report that we finally reached the end of the chemical processing and expect to have all of the chemical 
and debris shipped off site by the end of the workday. We feel that the risk to the local community is now back to a normal state, although they will still have to deal with our construction crews as we restore the property. We're gonna to have to break up the foundation and bring in some more soil and fill in the holes. And so we're gonna continue with the road closures for the limited amount of time. We have to remove the container wall and it'll have to come in and out. But we're happy to turn this back over to the neighbors uh, and get their lives back to normal uh, and get the city operating back as it, it's used to. Uh, I wanna say thanks again to the mayor's office, uh, Louisville EMA, and all of our unified command partners, KDEP, <clears throat> Everyone has really pulled together at the federal, state, and local level to get this resolved uh, in the best way possible. So uh, again, thanks to them very much. And uh, Jody, I think you're next. Yeah, thanks, Chuck. And, uh, and he's obviously been a great partner, and we appreciate everything that he's done. So somewhat to close us out, and the mayor's, uh, you know, made a, a lot of thanks. So, you know, I can't emphasize that, all the, all the partners. But if this doesn't show the community, you know, anything, it shows the talent that we have to get us through situations like this on the local, the state, and the federal um, side of it, where, you know, this is, this, is a true, um, this is a true testament of how these operations are supposed to are supposed to go. Um, we didn't have any injuries. Uh, we did have issues. Um, every emergency uh, plan that was put in place worked when we had some issues through the last couple weeks. So like I said, this, this is a true testament of how these processes are supposed to work. Um, just a little bit of, of some instruction for after this. Um, we are going to allow uh, one person from each of the news agencies to go back um, we don't want any cameras. We're going to have Metro TV go back and get you all some B-reel that they will show you all or share with you all later this afternoon. By, uh, we're going to try to do it by early this afternoon, but you can take your, uh, your phones, and it's, it's just a small area that we're going to be able to get you all um, really right up next to the Connex boxes to show you all what was going on. So um, when we leave here, we'll, uh, we'll drive over. We ask that you park on Timmy. Um, and we will escort one person again from each of the news agencies back to, to, uh, to take a look. And like I said, feel free to take some pictures with your phones, but we don't want um, the large cameras that you've got now just due to the space that we're going to get you all in. So um, hopefully that will help you all give you a perspective on uh, some of the operations and some of the obstacles in the, the actual working environment uh, that was going on during the, uh, the situation, especially over the last week and a half. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Mayor Greenberg, and we'll answer any questions. Thank you so much, Jody. Appreciate that. And, and we do want to get you guys back there. Uh, we're going to open it up for questions in one second. I'm going to do something I've never done before, and I'm actually going to ask the first question of Chuck. Uh, but I would like just for Chuck to briefly uh, talk a little bit about the uniqueness of this situation uh, from his perspective at the federal level, seeing things that have happened all across the country, knowing the history, just to talk about how unique this is, and then we'll open it up to questions uh, from any members of the media. Chuck? So EPA has a, a long history of emergency response work ever since the Superfund program came about. Uh, it is pretty common for us to deal with basement chemists. We frequently deal with hoarding situations where chemicals are involved and often deal with explosives. But it's pretty rare in, in my experience, uh, certainly unique for me, uh, that in, definitely here in Region 4 where we've dealt with all three of those at once at one site. And then certainly each one complicates trying to deal with the other. Um, and so it, this has definitely been one of the, the biggest challenges that we've had to face from a worker safety issue. Uh, and that transcends into a community safety issue because if we make a mistake, the community gets impacted after that, so. Chuck, you mentioned last time we talked to you some of the stuff you found that maybe you didn't expect, but you were able to handle it pretty well. Did you ever come across anything that maybe would have made a controlled burn a problem. Yes, and that's part of the reason why we went with this option. And I, and I wanna give uh, Louisville Metro a lot of credit for reassessing the situation and, and coming on and doing this because the amount of unknowns uh, and everything involved um, certainly would have complicated that. Uh, I do wanna say though, that this process worked exactly as it's supposed to. This is exactly what should have happened there. And we all got together, looked at the problem, came up with another solution and implemented it. And it's a true unified command uh, event. And I was actually really impressed with the way every level of government came together to get to where we are today. 
so I, I keep reading about the, the 20 chemicals or whatever. That number is um, fairly low. Uh, we're well over 100 different chemicals found in the house. And though we haven't been cataloging and inventorying every one of them, uh, where possible, we've removed trays and racks of chemicals out of the house. Uh, there were a few that were fairly easy, easily accessible for us to actually go in and get. Um, uh, we found additional mercury in the home. Um, we found a couple of uh, poison inhalation compounds, some Grignard reagents. Uh, we found pyrophoric material that reacts on contact with water and air. Uh, there are a, a lot of chemicals in there that um, probably should not have been stored in a residential environment. Where do they go? You mentioned they're being brought off site. Where do they go next? Uh, they're temporarily being stored at a uh, MSD facility. Uh, KDEP has volunteered to set up an air monitoring system, much like we have uh, here at the house, to monitor the boxes. Although uh, our sample results, we just got back uh, last night, uh, indicate that the material isn't hazardous waste. It's just a little stinky. <laughs> it's probably the best way to describe it. Um, but we do not think that it is uh, an overt hazard to anyone. Uh, we've got the air monitoring in place as a contingency, just like we've been doing here. Uh, to try and get that risk level as low as possible. Uh, our budget here was at $1.4 million. We do not expect to spend all of that, but I will not know the final costs until we contract for final disposal. Uh, and that will be a very large part of the total cost is what it's gonna take to get that into an appropriate facility and get it managed properly. How does that compare to the original plan? You mentioned this was more laborious and more expensive, but they're still the right way to go. We never did a full estimate of, of what the burn. I can only speak to what EPA's internal costs are. I wouldn't know what the other costs for uh, Louisville Metro or anything else were for that. Uh, we were happy to provide sampling and air monitoring support uh, during that plan. Uh, much of that plan we actually borrowed and used for this and for all of our contingencies and everything, we kept those response plans in place uh, and have had a contingency of contractors sitting over here in our command post just waiting for something to happen in order to implement it. And that's a federal budget? Yes. Uh, we still intend to fill in, uh, we, we're going to remove the, uh, the foundation concrete uh, and then we're going to fill the hole in and grade the site down and uh, control water and get some grass growing on it so it doesn't erode off. Uh, there at 6213. 6211 is a little different story. She graciously allowed us to utilize her property during all this. So we're gonna replant the vegetation that we've taken out and make it look uh, as much as close as we can to what it looked like before we showed up. Thank you all very much.